Good morning everyone, good afternoon and perhaps even good evening. Thank you so much for dropping by and joining me for a very chilled out, chillaxed, spontaneous, kind of half late edition of the 3D shenanigans. Mr. Charles is already here, wonderful to see you again after Chris's stream. I'm kind of taking your slot, I suppose, for streaming, even though neither of us really have a slot. So it's I like the idea of doing Twitch if and when we can fit it in. So wonderful to see you, very good. Let's go get started with a little bit of music before I take you through what I'm going to attempt to do today, which may or may not work. So full disclaimer here, epidemic sound. See if we can put something up from the um, maybe browse section here. That last time the the beauty thing worked quite well, didn't it? Was it was it themes? They change this every time. Fashion and beauty. There we go. I think I'm going to go and try maybe this one here. 53 tracks streetwear lookbook. I like it. Then we go to vocals and we'll say instrumental only, please. And then put that on. Also probably change my audio output device. And then perhaps we hear something. I like it. DZ, wonderful to see you. The Broccoli Bingus is here. I'm so glad you're here, both of you. This is great. DZ is one of the most prolific vendors on Renderosity today. Let us check if the magic Shout out actually works. I'll say Twitch. I'll say my channel. <laughs> and then I'll try exclamation mark DZ and we'll see where that gets us. Does that do anything? Uh, no. Okay, that means I haven't set that up. <laughs> Darn. But I will totally do that. Let me quickly put my highlighter on so I can clue you in on to what I'm going to try to do today. And that, as I said, this may or may not work out. Let's it's a here, point of focus, that's the one. I'm using that utility. It puts a tiny little highlight. You're very welcome. It's the thought that counts, isn't it, DZ? It puts a tiny little orange highlight around my cursor, and that means when I point at these infinitely tiny little menus, you know what's going down. I've bought this from ArtStation here for literally $2.09, which is essentially unbelievable, by a friendly chap called Arman Kasimov, and it's in the game assets category. It's a fully featured marvelous designer project can we see this in full full view here this is what it looks like and it is apparently modeled around the genesis 8 male figure i don't think that's quite true but we're gonna go we're gonna see how this how this looks in marvelous designer and my plan is to take an avatar take a genesis figure and make her wear this and then strike a pose make a quick render out of this and see what a two dollar asset actually buys us and how much work is required to make that work so these are the patterns here so i'm anticipating quite a bit of work that means we're going to have to do some uvs i might not bake the maps from marvelous designer out i might redo them in substance painter but you know just in principle i think i'm going to start in marvelous designer and try to bring this all into uh, das studio and we'll see if we can come up with a funky render at the end. Let's see if and how that works. A little bit of organizational work around here. I might have a folder that I can use for this. I'll just call it works August 2022. And I think none of this in here I want to use. So that's just that I can probably go and get rid of that in its entirety. Much like pretty much like all these things. Yeah, there we go. MD projects, that is not something, that was something I tried yesterday. Different outfit altogether, much more complicated. Let's see. So I have two versions of Marvelous Designer I can try out. Marvelous Designer 10, which I'm more familiar with, and the more, the, the later version, Marvelous Designer 11. That is one I'm not quite that familiar with. Let me just make it difficult on myself and use that. See what happens. <laughs> Broccoli, what are you up to today? Are you gonna stream today? It was really nice seeing you draw on, was it on Saturday, Sunday? That was really nice. Very good. Very good. I'll drop by more often. I had to dash off because I hadn't quite eaten. So thank you for the compliment about the game, by the way. I appreciate that. Marvelous designer. 
DZ, I would imagine your much of your work is done in Marvelous Designer, starts in Marvelous Designer, then goes through a process of improving in ZBrush. And then after that, I, I'm just imagining your workflow. We have a whole uh, Substance Painter session at the end. That's right, right? But that is how I would approach it. <laughs> that might not be the correct way. Okay, first of all, have I forgotten all the button things here? Right click and drag to to do that. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I've just downloaded and unzipped the project. So it comes as an OBJ as well as a Marvel Designer project. Just go and open that up. And this, I think this is it. Yes, this is it. Indeed, it's just called project here. So I'm going to go and once I make changes, I'm going to go and save that out into my own folder. So I'm just going to go and open that up. That's how it comes from the marketplace. So two bucks. It's very cool. The $2 option is actually the one that lets you use this for personal bits and pieces, uh, not for commercial use. I think it's kind of a gray area. If you were ever to do this, if you were to buy the commercial license, I don't know if you can turn this into a DAS garment and then sell it on the DAS store. I'm not entirely sure if that's what the commercial license means. If you wanted to do something like that, I would always, always get in touch with a vendor and say, are you okay with this if I buy the commercial license or shall we do a royalty share once it goes up elsewhere for, for sale? I would always do that just to be just, you know, fair. And that is the outfit. I might go and turn my background into something a little bit more pleasing on the eyes. Format 3 background, picture fill. That's just, I like, I prefer that here. There we go. Separates itself a little better. No avatars included, which is good. Often vendors do that. They include the Genesis figure, and that is not always legal either. <laughs> Your workflow is Marvelous Designer to ZBrush, to DAS Studio, to ZBrush, to DAS Studio, to Substance Painter. Kind of back to, to DAS Studio. I like it. I like it. Yes, of course. There is always tomorrow. Do you know, Broccoli, I do this as well. I have Twitch kind of an as an if and when thing. And often I, I'm, I'm too busy. I don't have the energy and, you know... Sometimes I'm really up for it, also an odd time. So it's usually my streaming time on Twitch is kind of around the afternoons from 4 p.m., 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My really regular slot that I stick to is week, uh, weekdays, week, sorry, weekends, Saturdays and Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. That, I do that, and I do, I do like that. Let's go and start with the Genesis 8 female figure and see how how that integrates. So yeah, I'm going to go and use uh, maybe eight. Eight is good. Let's start with eight. And I'll just go and export her out and see how that shape fits with the avatar. And if not, then we're going to go make some, some funky changes on that. So I'll use the high-res version here. Export that out. And this is in fact the correct directory. I'm really chuffed about this. I'll call her G8F a pose. I'll go and use the regular Dash Studio preset here. And we don't really need surfaces, so I'm going to go and untick that. Let's see how that'll look if I'll head over to... The, the whole menu has changed in 11, so I'm still kind of finding my way around this. It's better in some places, but other places I just, you know, haven't found where these things are. I'm going to add an avatar. Also, fonts just a tiny bit smaller. Is that good for my aging eyes? Everything's good here, except for this button, align bottom to ground. Never take that. It's terrible. We have four material zones, four materials. That is kind of good. Okay, so a pose doesn't quite line up with the garment. That is, I don't think that is something that I want to, that I want to rectify here. So, I could spend some time grabbing pieces like this and then just um, moving them over to the arms, but much easier at this point is to just get rid of the avatar and export this out. That also gives me a little indication of what the topology is going to be like. So I haven't investigated this at all because I'm not uh, familiar with this outfit here. But what is a good idea to do at this point, especially if you haven't made the garment, is to check out the particle distance here on many of these pieces. What looks great in Marvelous Designer doesn't always look great when you start exporting it. So these are kind of 20 here. These are five. So they, 
I'm not sure if they need to be five. So what sometimes what is a problem is when you go and export this out and you see you've got a mesh that's like five million polygons and you think <laughs> that's a little too too much here but this seems to be okay i don't think i'm going to do any retopoing here we've got a mix between quads and tries which is also okay but we've got lots of intricate detail here at the top so this is sometimes where geometry really just gets eaten up by the project i'm going to go leave it as it is and just export the whole thing out as obj and then we'll see Come on, I just texture texture surface is fine, and then I'll see if I can uh, make the the Genesis eight figure into a morph target that actually fits the garment more, so I can grow the A pose into it and then go to a regular pose from that. Let's go do that OBJ, and we'll call that um, Outfit V one. All patterns, all trims, single object welded, thin. And we're not worried about the UVs at this point. I'm just going to go and export this Dash Studio scale. Perfect. So it's not UV mapped, and it's just there as a little guide in uh, in Dash Studio. You be right back. No worries. I'll be here. <laughs> Super. Import outfit v1. Check it out, see how it comes in. That loaded relatively fast, so I'm happy about that already. It's a little dense, but it's not it's not something that Dash Studio can't handle, so I'm I'm happy about this. As I said, I've seen I've seen tons of issues when you do that. This is this looks good. This looks good. I don't have to do any any magic tweaking. Sometimes you have to be creative. Like some some marvelous designer creators put amazing amount of top stitching in there, which looks great in marvelous designer, but it creates geometry so high that it's very difficult to um, to use. So let me see what happens if I use if I make the figure smaller here. Yeah, let's just call it 94% here. And then we'll go and drape, put the arms kind of down to here. That will let's say 23 maybe. Twenty-four even. Nope. That's cool. I think we'll we'll be able to deal with that. I could move the arm forward a bit, but that's that's cool. Twenty three is fine. So this is going to be conversely minus twenty three. And legs and bum and all that. That looks like it's working out okay. The rest, I think it can just it can just infer. Okay, I'll go and remove the outfit again. I'm going to go and make just make a little just save this thing here. <laughs> And this is going to be, I might treat myself to a new folder here, create subfolder. I'll call this one the Lolita, military Lolita. That's the one. Military Lolita. Interesting name that is. I'll go uh, maybe a scene subset in this case, and then I'll call that G8F. A pose two, just so that I kind of know what that is. Anything except for the film and draw options node gets saved. And the Madness Middles is here. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you. I'm going to go and export her out as well. Once again, as high res, that's cool. A pose two. Nothing else has changed. So this avatar should now fit the outfit so the idea is that i'll go and import this now here g8 f8 post 2 add as avatar let's see if that works fits her much better i think the avatar is a little bright 
So I'll select all faces and just give her a slightly different color here. It could be nice and dark gray. That'll, that'll work. Okay, let's see if we can just magically fit that here. I haven't done much simulating with Marvel's Designer 11. I'm kind of hoping that it's as performant as I remember 10 to be. Should that turn out not to be the case, I'm happy to go switch back over to 10. I don't think there is kind of a format difference between the two. So 10 projects can be open in 11, and I believe 11 projects can be open in 10, but I haven't actually tried that out yet. So let's see. Totally unresponsive. That is not a good sign. <laughs> this could be Marvelous Designer 11. I should see something happen. I can barely move the viewport. It's That's not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. I can always try the GPU simulation instead because this is this is not not really usable. Could be a setting, could be God knows what. Maybe I'll just go back to 10. What are you using, DZ? Are you using 10, 11, even older version? That is better. The simulation might not be as accurate, but for something like if it's about course adjustments, it's really important that the computer actually performs. If it doesn't do that, not usable. Well, let's say this has kind of worked and I'll go to the regular A pose from now. Let me see if, I, if that works. Import OBJ. This one would be the first A pose that we had. So this is kind of the one that is 100% instead of 95 and the arms are slightly further out. Let's try that. This is going to be an add and a morph target over 60 frames, I'm thinking. See what's cooking. Gradually grows into the outfit. Oops, what happens there? What's happening with the arms down here? They appear to be glued onto something. <laughs> Not good. Yeah, they're glued, aren't they? Why are they glued? That's not something that I had anticipated. What's happened here? That is bizarre. Could that be GPU simulation? Let's try CPU, see if that works any better. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> That would already be, that would already mean we failed at the first hurdle. What is that glued to? Super unperformant. That is super underwhelming. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Well, let me see if it actually is Marvelous Designer 11 or if it is uh, if it is something that has to do with the outfit. I, as I said, I haven't actually tested this yet. So let's forget 11, go back to 10. Go back to something that used to work. And the step with the, with the two A pauses isn't really that necessary. It's just kind of a nice proof of concept. If this works, then the kind of a larger pose change is also going to work. But if that doesn't work, then, you know, I, I can I can stop trying at this point and play, you know, Elden Ring or something. <laughs> let's, let's hope it doesn't come to that. So let's try to open that project again just named project final <laughs> and then we'll add the avatar i guess i'm just more used to this interface because this is what it's been like for years and 11 is still very new to me i've only i've only investigated the trial version for a month or so but i've never really worked with it you know sweet so uh, display 
format background image. That gives me that nice little dark background here. I much prefer that. We'll go and import our avatar here, a post two. Add as avatar, indeed. Oh, translation, this is going to be centimeters here, I think. And align to bottom, no. There. See what happens. Make it a little easier on the eye. And now, let me just try CPU simulation right away and see what happens. Looks like it's done it. Looks like it's done it. So let me see what happens if I go and import my my regular apples now. So uh, import obj, I think apples two. That's the one. And we go add, and we'll say morph target, and we'll say sixty frames. Sounds good. Let's see what happens. See if that works any better. Fingers crossed. Is anything happening? I think if I could, I would probably go and move the... Invert the mouse. Are you doing it, buddy? You're back! How exciting! I was just wondering, DZ, what version of Marvelous Desire you're using? Or if you're using Claw? Because I'm not entirely sure if I'm if I'm all that happy with the performance of Marvelous Designer uh, 11. I feel it's extremely sluggish on my computer. 10 appears to work a little bit better, so I might just be making that up. It could be the outfit. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Is it actually moving? I, has it moved already? Is it finished? I, I can't really can't tell. It could just be very heavy outfit. I didn't. I didn't think it was. You're still using nine. Good. Okay. And that's perpetual license, right? I would imagine. Because I've had nine and I only upgraded to ten because I like the the kind of the optional fitting tool that they had there. But I'm such a such a beginner user in Marvelous Designer. I just I like what it can do, but I don't do anything very productive with it. I like playing with it, like as if it was a video game, but it doesn't really I'm I'm not productive with it like you. So I'm I'm kinda glad that you have something that uh, that you have a mission, you know, you actually make something with it. So that's much, much cooler. Yeah, up until 12, we can upgrade. I think, can you still upgrade? If you have nine, you can upgrade to 10, 11. Uh, yes, you can still upgrade. I think you might be able to upgrade to 12. I don't know if they let you upgrade three versions back. I think that was the deal, wasn't it? Last upgrade you can make is 12. That, uh, that much I know. And then beyond 12, they don't offer upgrades anymore. So yeah, this, this, might, this might be... It may have done it, I don't really know. Perhaps, perhaps it, hap it happened so smoothly that I didn't that I didn't see it. Possible. So I'll go and make this. I'll turn her back into the into the uh, a poles here. Oops. No. Don't do that. <laughs> and then there was the scale as well, wasn't there? So scale 100. And then also uh, try to. Try to find a pose just to see if anything. Like that. Let's try that. That's it's a little that that's often tricky here with garments. But let's try it out. Let's try it out. This is called the walking A. Uh, so Let's 
see how that works. Also, I'm not really digging the music. I'm really not feeling it here. Synth, synth brass, never a good idea when used like that. I don't think so. I'll go back to dreamy beats. That's a, that's 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 kind of my my favorite chill out playlist here. <laughs> Much better. Let's see if I can import this as a morph target here. And object is a morph target. 60 frames should be okay. Let's see if it works. Okay. Hey, Mr. Brian, how's it going? <laughs> Very good to see you. I'm trying my hand at a $2 Marvelous Designer outfit that I bought on ArtStation. And I'm seeing if it can be if it can be turned into a funky little das render i'm still at the very beginning stages of it so welcome thank you so much for your subscription i really appreciate that very cool glad you could make it how was work oh it looks like my my streaming laptop has completely frozen good stuff it's a good computer day when that happens Is the problem here is that the pose change might be too dramatic and I don't think the outfit is really made for that. So yeah, that isn't that isn't good. That isn't good at all. Oh right, just like what we we're saying yesterday. I like it. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, I'm still uh, working my way through a uh, Vera Stanhope book. <laughs> that is quite nice. I wish I could. Could I just stop it? Is that something we can do here? Because I can already see this is going nowhere. Marvelous Designer does not like to be interrupted. It's like when D-Force is about to explode. Nope, you can't stop me now. I, I need another nine hours to calculate something that you don't want. <laughs> Thanks. Very, very helpful. <laughs> Mindless tedium, okay. Dang. This is going well, isn't it? Yes. Thank you, Marvelous Designer. Let me just go and um, brute force close you here. Because what's the point? There, brute force approach. Oh yeah, also let's let's find a different pose that is less less crazy let's let's tr let's try this one here that's at least something that's not as uh, extreme so that should that should do the trick in principle this is called standing c so g8 standing c let's see if that works i just tried marvelous designer 11 it looks like it's not really um it's very not so performant as the one that that i'm used to so 10 works a little better on my system let me try go back to 11 see what see what happens there willy how's it going <laughs> d-force is like a seven gates of hell for you i, I like d-force when you know how to handle it but uh, d-force isn't all that dissimilar to the marvelous designer draping engine it's just very very often like with with unknown marvelous designer outfits people really overdo it with the stuff that they put in there so something that looks really good inside marvelous designer that could not ever be used outside of marvelous designer for anything usable and i'm kind of hoping that this is not one of those outfits this is the one i bought actually let me go and give you a give you a link here it is two dollars nine currently in the sale I even get apparently a little commission here if I go and copy this exciting link. Lolita outfit. Or let's say military Lolita outfit. There we go. Have a look at it and see if you wanted to play with it. It's it's a very it's a relatively simple outfit. Let me go and bring it in. I bought a couple and one of them I've looked at it is full of top stitching and it looks really nice but it'll you'd need like I don't know 200 CPUs to simulate that at one frame a minute so I don't know <laughs> don't know what hardware some people have is it is not the hardware that I have sadly <laughs> 
Yes, this one appears uh, less dense. So it, I've checked it. It was about uh, two hundred thousand polygons. So that's not that's not that bad. That is something I know Das Studio can handle that. And it also conversely means Marvelous Designer should <laughs> be able to handle that. I'll go and import my A pose 2 here that I've tweaked so that it works with the avatar. And then when we apply the pose, hopefully the the outfit can kind of grow into it. I might just use the GPU simulation because CPU it really isn't isn't doing me any favors here. And we'll just use CPU at the end to let it settle down. Hopefully that plan's gonna work out. Yeah, that's hopefully that's just gonna that's just gonna stay a little more puffy while we work things out here. Let's go and import I'll make the avatar a little bit more pleasing on the eye. Import, we had standing C, that might work. And that's also add as morph target, and we'll see what that does. Fingers crossed. Yeah, uh, that's a shame. This is basically exactly what happened before. It's like the garment doesn't quite follow. I don't really know why. <laughs> I don't know why it stays like that. It's like it's glued into position, and it doesn't want to come out it's as if there's invisible avatar at the back here and it just doesn't want to it doesn't want to come i don't know what is what is the problem here if i go and switch this to the cpu simulation will that work so that's a problem that I've never really had before. It should just go and settle down. It's like it's not really acknowledging that. One frame a minute. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Don't worry. You gotta you gotta rest, Charles. Absolutely. You can't do 3D 19 hours a day. You just you just gotta give it rest. You gotta sleep. <laughs> that could be Brian. Absolutely. That could be. Well, let's try it with a much simpler outfit then and just see if my if my poses are okay. Ah, I'm using high res version, so let's see if that is potentially the reason. That could be it. That could be it. So I think I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna do first of all, thanks marvelous designer, but this is annoying the hell out of me. You're gonna go you're gonna go end end task, buddy. So no more marvelous designer eleven. I I, I already don't like it. Full stop. That, that's sad to say. I really don't like it. And then I'm gonna do the same here with the base res versions. Maybe that that helps. Could be. There's nothing else uh, on this character here. So this is gonna be the the standing pose. That's good filter objects. I might just I might just try that just in case. I'll add that. And then I'll also go and use the A pose again. And that was uh, I can just go undo, I suppose. Somehow like on almost there we go. <laughs> it's what happens. You want to have some fun with 3D applications, and of course that thing isn't gonna happen. Agony, depression, anger, those are those are the things that are gonna happen. I'm going to put oh no we needed to have the the smaller version so i need to go and load this actually let me go bring that in so the the outfit i've worked out was um didn't quite fit the a pose so i adjusted my a pose into making the character a little smaller and putting the arms a little closer to the body so this is what fits the avatar Let's go do that as base, and then we'll save that one out as Apples 2. I think that's what I what I did there. Thanks for dropping by, though. Um, if you're still here, Charles, I'll catch you next time. 
Righty, that's that. Then we'll go. You go back to Maldusana. Ten. <laughs> and the commander Cody is here. The two cats yelling are here. All of you are here. That is really cool. Top of the afternoon, top of the evening to you. Welcome to a special 3D Shenanigans Late Edition, where I'm mixing up two versions of Marvelous Designer, and I'm wondering why does nothing work? <laughs> it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. I bought a $2 outfit on ArtStation and I'm trying to make that work and hopefully turn it into a funky render. Let's open the project first. Because this is as it comes in. It's called the Military Lolita Outfit. And while this is spending like nine minutes loading the project, I might as well just show you what that looks like. This is it here. And I thought, you know, it's relatively, it looks fairly simple. I'm sure it's not made for Genesis 8 mail. <laughs> By Armand Kasimov. There's another one I bought that is, uh, which one was that again? That was, it wasn't by him, this was by somebody else. But there's some amazing things that you can pick up for literally under five bucks. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking, hey, that is on one hand awesome. But of course, if it takes you 11 hours to get anything usable out of it, then this is not what we want to do. <laughs> Might not be the best. But the cool thing is that you, with, with a bit of, um, you know, work and, and interest in the matter, you can hopefully make these things your own and I was kind of trying I'm kind of hoping I can make that happen <laughs> let's go and add actually import add as avatar here so that's the a pose to this one here that's now the low res version let's see if that works add as avatar okay so I'll press space and let it quickly simulate its way around here that seems to work. Even though it is extremely sluggish. But it's worked, that's cool. So now I go and import that morph target. Import add obj as the standing pose. See what that looks like. Add morph target. And I'll leave it in CPU and just see how, how it copes with that. And let's hope that isn't gonna kind of stick. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and Kevin, we do need to do that uh, that co stream still. It's just like like you, I've just had literally no time for anything. So <laughs> we will we will do it one day. We will do it one day. And I'm very much looking forward to that. Sorry, I didn't catch your stream the other day. That was uh, that was something that uh, that just flashed up after the fact. So <laughs> maybe next time. Hey, something is totally off. The avatar isn't even moving, just the garment. Why would it do that? So what is wrong with my thinking then? I wonder. Fascinating, isn't it? What is wrong with my thinking then? That doesn't make any sense, does it? <laughs> How peculiar indeed. Done it a million times. But this outfit is like hexed or something. I'd love to see where this is going in 60 frames. So avatar is not moving. Outfit is getting screwed up just by importing morph target. Hmm. Yes. Interesting. Quick, let's subscribe. <laughs> huh. So it almost I can kind of see that the that the shape of that pose is in here. But the avatar itself hasn't actually moved. And it's like, yeah, let me go and try something else. New project. 
And this is in fact... Just the avatar. That, that, sounds, that sounds good. Also, please don't always burn my retinas out. I need them for the next few years. If I go and just without a garment, if I say import OBJ and I'll say that. And I want to open morph target. Or is it add morph target? Oh my goodness, maybe that maybe I made that mistake. Add an open morph target. Maybe that's a different thing. Let me try add morph target. Or is it open morph target? Let me try open morph target first. See what happens. So what I want to see is the avatar changing into the other pose. And what we in fact do see is that that thing isn't actually happening. <laughs> let's try. Let's try add then. <laughs> How fascinating! So open didn't work. Let's go try add morph target. That also doesn't work. I love it. When did that feature get removed then? Interesting. Well, let's see if it's any better than 11. I mean, last time, last time I tried it, it, it was it was working. I thought could be could be that something's changed. I mean, bugs do creep in from time to time. That is insane. <laughs> That is insane. Oh, please do, Willie. Yes, we'd love to hear a little bit about you. <laughs> You can't share links here because I've been visited one too many times by one too many spammers. So sadly, now we need to all suffer. I, I apologize for that, but that's a great way of doing it. If you want to check out Willie's art, then that is how we can do that. How do you get into Das Studio? Just out of curiosity. Let me go and try this again. Import OBJ. This is going to be my avatar. I'll say that pose open as avatar don't worry about the arrangement points that works and then we go import add obj and then we'll say the standing pose and i didn't think it makes a difference add or open just go morph target marvelous designer finds it automatically and goes and does that so there we go so this this works that's good to know let's go and bring that other morph target back be great if we could just switch between a couple of poses that'd be that'd be nice i think you can kind of save them somehow it's very it's a little difficult. Being perfect. So that works. We know that that works. Let me go and see if I can open the kind of, can I add a garment into this somehow now? Maybe just open garment. Is that, is that gonna work with this and that? Jeans, is it really? Let's try. No, of course not. Um, can I just go, do I have to go just open that? Open add project. There we go. That's what I meant. I thought that was possible somehow. <laughs> Let's try. Mm -hmm. You wanted to stay creative in lockdown. I like it. I like it. That is a brilliant, brilliant idea to do that. And a wonderful way to get into, into Das Studio. I totally agree. Want to add this as a garment? Let's see if that works stay mentally healthy so to say i like it well good to meet you i'm glad we are glad we could hook up like this and from what i gather you know charles 
from a previous life or through also through deviant art i don't know I, I just had a i just looked at your chat a little bit and it sounded like you guys were a bit close which is nice so hey that is that's that's good let's go simulate that see if it works kind of does kind of does Okay, let's see if we can import the morph target now. I didn't think I had to select a part of the avatar. I thought it just worked that out automatically. And morph target. Okay, let's see what happens. It is working in principle. I like that. And it is now behaving the way it should have. So why Marvelous Designer 11 didn't do that? It's a bit of a question mark to me. Oh, he's the original Daz mentor. That is cool. Daz has pupils. I mean, Charles has pupils. That's good. That is very nice. So I'm just a little puzzled when I tried it the last 10 times, it didn't work. It's just like, what is this, like 11th time lucky hour? Is that what it's about? Interesting. <laughs> I don't really know why that would be. At least it's working. I mean, that is, you know, that's, that's good to know for me. That is very good to know. I'll let this settle down I mean, if this is if this works then that is nice maybe we'll find a little slightly better pose this was just a kind of a test pose and also a little custom character here we can probably try yeah let's try that and also maybe make her a little smaller so i've made her 95 percent here just so that it fits the garment a bit better let me see um What better poses do we have? I'd like to try this hair out here, classic blowout hair. I've never tried that out. So that, that'll be interesting to see. Um, yes, and some kind of a standing pose. I'm thinking, oops. By function. Kind of a standing pose and also perhaps something that fits on the character male or female doesn't really matter hand on hip is sometimes a bit of a problem arms up is also a problem for this outfit at least Since it is a military one, I could I could do with kind of a salute pose. I don't know if I have one. How about this? Will this work? That might work. It's similar to what to the one we had, so I think I might. I might stay with something like this. So many poses. <laughs> and that's only the ones that I've installed, not the ones that I haven't installed. Maybe I'll try this and then I'll try also as um, a scale 94%. That's still, that's still correct. I like that. And then maybe we'll try a custom character while we're here as well just something like a like a slightly different head and body actually under people that'll that'll be better she goes even smaller Or a nice mix of multiple 
is also good. I think she's more like, yeah, she's a child. So many morphs. Yeah, let's try that just for argument's sake, like 60% of that. And we'll see what happens in the head. Cause that is really the thing we see in the portrait. Sometimes it's all about just trying things out and seeing what what works. Fifty percent of that. I'm I'm down with that. Let's see if that works. So this is all still base resolution, I think. Just wanted to be absolutely sure. Yes, it is. So it should work. See if Marvel Susanna can handle that. So custom character, I'll call it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> he is as much your mentor as you are his. That is very nice. That's the best relationship to have. I really like that. That is very good to hear. So let's see what happens with the custom character morph target. See if that works. Add morph target 60 frames. All right. <laughs> and we'll watch the show. It looks a little weird when Marvelous Designer morphs from one to another, and that's only because it doesn't have a skeleton. So it, I think it just goes by shortest distance. So when, when one morph target goes into the next it just basically shifts all the points by shortest distance at the same time and that means like arms look really weird and creepy um, as it's doing that but as it comes to the to the last frame it goes and the position is correct but that doesn't do real morphing any favors and i, I don't know why they can't make that a little bit more like better <laughs> Because it just introduces weird artifacts and sometimes you have to work with intermediate poses to make that work. It's not like DeForce and Dash Studio does a much better job at doing that because it has a skeleton. So it would move the arm literally where it needs to move rather than just shift the hand from here over to there and then just, you know, bend out the arm. That, but that's how Marvelous Designer does it because it just doesn't have that. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the skeleton. So the whole morph from one to the other that doesn't doesn't always look great <laughs> as this example shows so and the the problem is that sometimes then the the garment gets gets really mangled so if this doesn't work i'm gonna have to work with uh, with a little um just with a with one or two intermediate frames in between here that i can uh, that i can move out to kind of you know approach that see how it goes see if it actually looks good in principle i see i think the garment isn't isn't made for an arm that is that high so in hindsight and this is probably a really bad pose <laughs> i'm just thinking <laughs> It's true. Um, it's one of those, it's kind of a dual edged sword. The time we live in means we have the tools available to do basically everything, but it's, it almost takes, it's a hard lesson to understand. It might not be in our best interest to do that. So by everything, I mean, literally everything like, you know, I can download Unreal Engine and be a game developer because that's something that sounds really interesting for me, but that might not be in my best interest because it's good to try it out, but it's also good to understand, Hey, that might be too complex for me. So you, you've, you're on the right track there. 
Yeah, so I don't think this is a good idea. This isn't this isn't a great pose for that. So I should have put the arm uh, down a little, and maybe I can do that. Yeah, so clothing making clothing is incredibly difficult. I find the the creative process of it um, very exciting. I have to say, At the when I discovered Marvelous Designer like many many years ago, I thought that's. Uh, that, that it was an amazing tool. I really enjoyed it. I really liked um, what it could bring to the party. Um, and I think I've fallen in love with its features a little bit. But sadly, I've got to say, I'm super unproductive <laughs> with it um, because it can do so many cool things. I'll, I'll make, I, might, I might use this here. That'll be relatively easy to, to, so that the cape kind of, when that drapes up here, I think I might, I might use that. High heel pose is cool. I don't think we're going to show her feet. It's just going to be a render, something like that. I think I'll do, I'll do that. Let's try that. I'm going to export this and we'll see if that kind of works. I'll just overwrite this. Okay, I'll say custom character too. See if that morph target works better. Yeah, so in uh, things like Second Life, Marvelous Design is also used. And it's uh, it's such a cool idea that we have these tools to make that happen. And I know many people who've made a living out of literally making garments for, uh, for either games or other 3D things like, you know, uh, Dungeons & Dragons or like, you know, uh, Second Life or like Das Studio. Those are all great examples of, of really creative uses of, of Marvelous Designer. But you can also use it for things like um, tablecloths and anything where draped cloth is necessary. So I know people who make couches and funky sofas and chairs and uh, entirely Marvelous Designer. It's a really funky process to do that. This might totally screw up now, so I, I may have to go back to the original A pose. Well, we'll see how it goes. Looks like it's screwing up here. <laughs> I totally agree. There's the creative process in making something in here and then making it look good. Yes, I totally agree. But also, I think there's also merit in following that passion. So, um, it's, if you're into 3D and if this looks kind of fascinating to you, I'd, I'd recommend pick up the uh, pick up the trial version and play around with some simple patterns. I, I have lots of fun just sewing things together and then you know making pillows that have internal pressure and stuff like that. It's just there's so much good stuff that you can do with this. Yeah, look, this is something I've totally screwed up. It's it's really cool to be creative with Marvelous Designer, and I think that's also why there's so many garments that that look great but they'd be completely unfunctional if you were to try and export this out into something else it just it just wouldn't it just wouldn't work <laughs> i'm hoping this is not one of those garments okay let's go and do let's do this all let's do this again from scratch come on marvelous designer we're good you can stop <laughs> if only there was a stop button because <laughs> there isn't I like making animations with Marvelous Designer as well. So that's something I use it sometimes for, that I just use it as a draping engine. And there's so many wardrobe malfunctions that happen. Like when, when this looks good on a still standing figure, the moment you put a bit of um, forceful movement in there, like a, like a catwalk animation, everything just falls off and floats away. And <laughs> it's just one of those things. <laughs> kind of funny. If only there was a stop button. There's only the... The brute force stop button. I think I might do that. Come on. At least we know what poses that we're going to use now, so that's good. <laughs> Poser, yes, 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 absolutely. Poser back in the day. So um, I discovered 3D for me as a so I was kind of interested and intrigued by 3D through video games I picked up a PlayStation in PlayStation 2 in 2000 I think 2001 2001 I think it must have been fairly shortly after the 9-11 attacks I kind of remember that I was always into video games but I never had a games console and what really intrigued me was how real for that era the graphics looked so I looked at a demo in an, of um, 
Gran Turismo it was it, that was just running on a, on a TV there. Very realistic car racing game. And I thought, man, what tools do they use to make that look that cool? And then there's also the characters and how they animate them. And it really intrigued me. And through searching around, I found that studio in 2006 after trying, you know, crack copies of Maya and really couldn't make any, any head or tail of it. So I found um, that studio and that was, that was really cool. And I open avatar. No, actually, that's not good import and through that there was always back in those days there was still the poser crowd and the da studio crowd and i saw so many really really good looking renders coming out of poser and in the end i picked up a copy of poser 7 so that is the the one i copy that, that i picked up i'll go and say a pose 2 here that i'll then morph into into our pose here because this is the one that fits the avatar the fits the outfit groovy and that's how I how I basically fumbled around for many years between Carrara and that studio and Poser and eventually out of all of them the one that I that just really stuck with me was uh, that studio and that's you know that's where we are today add project final garment and I'm going to turn that into the custom character pose. So add garment. Perfect. Let's try. Let's try. <laughs> yeah, I, the, you know, I think they have, um, they have, they have a lot of work to do. I think the, the Smith Micro, I wouldn't say neglected poser, but I think DAS have really pushed the envelope in regards to features in there. The, it, was it was almost like um, the other way around. So poser was always the one that had, that pushed ahead with features. And that's why you'd pay for an upgrade because there were, there were things that poser had that, um, that really made it worthwhile upgrading like from uh, from nine to I think then there was 10 or 2012 I think the pro version was called and then 2014 the really cool features that were in there like the cloth room and stuff like that that you had these these types of things in there and then when Smith Micro kind of lost interest I'm kind of glad that Renderosity picked it up but it's also a difficult question to ask like um what other features do we need in Posa? I, from, from where I'm standing, it's almost feature complete in a way. There's always something you can improve, but what used to set Posa apart, that it was kind of, it had drastically, you know, set the, set the pace of what you could do with a 3D app like that. It's difficult to say, what would you add? Like maybe um, fluid simulation, 3D modeling? Who knows? Sage, how's it going? Good to see you. Let's go and try that morph target again. Or should I stop the simulation beforehand? Because it really freaks Marvelous Designer out. Like 99% resources are being used for that. It's terrible. Import OBJ. Custom character 2. Add as morph target 60 frames. Let's go do this thing. Keep our fingers crossed. Make that garment great again. <laughs> it's going. It's going. Right. I, th I think that is something where, where Daz really have the upper hand. If you've ever tried rigging things in um, for poser, clothing for poser, ugh, nightmare. It's true what DZ says. So whereas in Daz Studio, we have this wonderful transfer utility that kind of gets us uh, halfway there and then you just do fine tuning so that's a really really good thing that we have there oh better figures okay that is cool yeah it's almost a shame that there is now this that there's a split in like when Genesis, essentially when Genesis 2 came out or at definitely when Genesis 3 came out, that there is the poser compatibility was lost. I, I kind of, I think Genesis 1 seems to have worked in both poser and uh, DAS Studio. But that is kind of the time at which I kind of converted completely to DAS Studio and it was, uh, poser wasn't really working for me anymore at that point. And it's also at that point when we got iRay in DAS Studio, it was easier to get 
better looking renders faster out of DAS Studio. And that was before Cycles integration was a few years away in Posa. Seems to be a little bit of a half-hearted approach. It's a bit like, you know, if you compare Windows and Apple products, it's, it's a bit like DAS is a little bit like Apple. They have the software and the content and the customer service and the storefront out of one developer. Whereas with Posa, I find we make the software, other people make maybe the figure, perhaps we don't really know. And then still other people make the content and yeah, it's kind of, it's not as elegant and easy as it, as, uh, as it appears to be for me, at least with, uh, with DAS Studio. So imagine this is, this is good for me now. Is this, is this good? I, I don't think the, the skirt is kind of settled out. Let me see if I can, I can make that, just keep that, keep simulating that and let that, let that settle down here a little bit. But I think I'm okay with the pose. From what I can see, this could work. Maybe we're kind of halfway there. <laughs> Let that just, you know, cook out a little bit and we'll see what happens. Eye Ray looks so good, yes. Oh, that is why you left Poser as well, Chris. Okay, good to good to know. So lighting in the in the biased render engines like 3D Light and also Firefly in Poser was always there's so much trickery that you had to use in order to get a realistic looking render out of it. Just, you know, it's, it was easy to make relatively bad looking renders <laughs> that was that was easy but it was very very hard to make something that that would that you'd say is literally next level stuff like the stuff that black hearted does you know as an example and with iray even though it was a it was a difficult kind of learning curve to get to how to think about lighting it was actually much easier to get realistic lighting out of it so one single light source one hdri can literally get you 80 percent to where you need to be. And those things, those concepts were difficult in uh, in the biased render engines. Settled. I like it. How are we, how are we doing on the, on the color here? The transparency in these OpenGL type render engines is always a little bit um, wonky. Colors okay, shiny metal buttons also good. Seems to drape everywhere. I'd, I'd love to just pull this out here. See if I can make that happen without ruining everything. <laughs> Skirt's actually okay. I don't. I don't think so. I'd love it if it would be easier for me to just. Um, you know drape this now but it's just it's just a bit bit of a problem i might try it in in gpu mode like just this here you know i'd like to grab that out let me try gpu mode in fact let me try saving my project that's a good idea it took us like an hour to get to this point let's go and save project no actually no let's not do that let's go save as don't want to save my original over here Yeah, that was in here, wasn't it? Works there. That's it. Okay. Let's see how that works. <laughs> Real life is even better. I like it. <laughs> Yes, that's true. They put so the cycles render engine, they call that Superfly in Posa. And even though it is the render engine, I think many, um, many products that you buy, at, at, the, at least at the beginning, didn't have preset materials for that. So I think this is something that could work out really in Posa's favor if they could have uh, a ton of products that are basically Superfly ready. Okay, see if this destroys a GPU simulation. Or makes it b b b better. Oh my. Fingers crossed. 
So another tip from Christina that I've learned that if you wanted to have garments settle out a little, you can go and strengthen them for a sec and then unstrengthen them again. It's almost like what GPU is trying to do here. Yeah, I see this is kind of difficult. I meant to pull this out. I could free some stuff. Like the sleeve underneath here, I could freeze that. So that I don't, that the engine doesn't have to calculate everything. That's what sensible people would do. <laughs> With cowboys like me, yeah, we just go and mess with stuff and see what happens. <laughs> There's also layers that we could that we could talk about here. This could be one layer and then this could be the other layer. Maybe I don't mind actually that it's kind of going in there a little bit. Skirt sorted itself out as well. Maybe I'm maybe I'm okay actually. Let me go and just switch this over back to normal and just let it let it drape with CPU quickly. I love it when you can see people who use CPU simulation and for them their CPU simulation is like my GPU simulation, just inaccurate, you know. <laughs> What I did like about Poser, and I always liked that about Poser, was the integration of a render queue. That when you buy, I think it's on the Pro versions you get that, that you get this tiny little program that you can just uh, deploy on other computers on your network and then send a render to the queue and let other computers deal with the rendering. Could be your local computer, but also other computers. And that leaves the interface free so that you can go and set up the next camera and the next scene. That makes it really productive. And that is something that they, as well as Carrara, had from kind of the very beginning. I really appreciated that. It was very, very good workflow, that. So in regards to materials then, just to have a quick nosy here, um, there are substance materials on here and I'm counting, I think, about four material zones. So there's the stitching here, the metal, the dark cloth and the light cloth. And I'm thinking, I, I'm having a suspicion that the UVs are probably not something that is set up. So let me go and uh, stop that simulation here. And that's up here now. UVs. Yes, I like. So I could try to retain, I could grab the maps directly out of, out of here. What we got here, cotton canvas is that one? That's one material, and this one is technical fabric. So they're just substance materials. I could just grab them out of here and then put them onto the surfaces again in, in Substance Painter and just let Blender UV unwrap this all, or just basically just pack the island, because this is just, it's getting that to into that. I could do that, but that looks, that's terrible, really. That's just, and it's, it's overlapping. So I don't know, this is a, a, a bit of a joke, gotta say. This is not really, it's not really good, <laughs> far from it. So I might just not use these materials at all. I just export the garment as it is, bring it into Blender and just let Blender do the, let Blender do the packing. And then we'll worry about getting those materials packed in another way, so to say. Maybe we can do, should we do something better with the naming or should we just go work it out? There's a hardware trim, there's one fabric here, there's another fabric, and then there's the, the canvasy bit, like the collar and the, the ruffles bit. And this is, this is, what is that? I can't even see that. 
it'll be a surprise. <laughs> it'll be <a> surprise. <laughs> that is the UVs. Dang, brother. <laughs> Dang, that is brother. Let me just go and, and pack it all in in Blender. Let me do that. It's it's probably let's do that. Got the pose, got the custom character thing. We'll give us some hair in a minute. When we're back in Das Studio, let's go deal with materials here, see if we can get those out. What's your workflow, Chris? Um, aside from you don't deal with other people's patterns, so you make your own patterns. So I suppose you already keep an eye on what will be the correct UV layout as you come out of Marvelous Designer. That's a good question for you as well as DZ. How do you guys handle it? I would, I mean, I, I would imagine, um, I'm, I mean, I know that you're very capable with Blender, so I would imagine you're probably a packing and Blender kind of guy. I use OBJ. And so in this case, I'll call this one Outfit V2, just so that we know, you know, that's the latest outfit here. <laughs> outfit V2, we want patterns, we don't want avatars, we want to see all trims we want this as a single object welded and thin we want the uv coordinates yeah great let's use those as well and that's really all we want so since i'm going into blender first i could just go and send this out as meters so i don't have to rejig the scale let's do it let's do it you lay out your patterns as close as I would for the UVs already. Yes, that's uh, that's the big difference between a 3D modeler and a fashion designer, I suppose, because they don't really mind. They just lay out the patterns the way it makes sense for a pattern maker. Um, and I'm sincerely hoping that at some version in the future, Marvelous Designer would have a UV editor that that would just be better at better than what we currently have. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of glad that we have the uv editor but this whole having to put every single pattern piece into position you know no that's just we we can't that's just not not something that's possible like we're not expecting miracles here and there's always better packing algorithms but it's something that makes pattern pieces auto not overlap i mean is that so hard to ask that's that's something that i'd like to see Just for those of us who just want to get materials directly out of Marvelous Designer without, you know, having having total nightmares. I'd like that. I'd like to see that. Okay, let's see if that works. That should be the correct scale already, shouldn't it? Meters? Let's see. And then you do remeshing in, in ZBrush, right? And then it gets replaced. Is there a way, I mean, um, that is, I, su I suppose there's a potential way in which you could polygroup from existing UVs in a ZBrush and then remesh, then the, at least the polygroups kind of remain intact. But yes, like you say, when you, when you do anything, any kind of remeshing operation, that's true. The, the materials will get... Uh, will get wiped out so if i were to, to what's the what are the statistics on this it just as a little yeah so half a million uh, triangles which is st which is a heavy which is still heavy so i'm not going to remesh it but yeah this is um this is this is a bit much <laughs> for das studio so i think if i were to have this as a store object i'd probably try to bring that down to like 200 100 to 200 something like that game engines I'd, I'd be i'd be much less than that but then we're going to lose a lot of detail so i'm going to not do remeshing here i'll i'll leave the geometry as it is i do i think now that i'm looking at it the collar is probably something i should have just turned out a little i think we're looking at the at the other side of the normals here I can do that here as well. That is something I can I can probably do here. Or in ZBrush. It's just that that would be easier actually in, in Marvelous Designer. Yeah, just so that we're not looking at the outside of the normals here. I'll just turn it into something like this. Let me try that. Let me try that. I didn't think of that um, earlier. I 
Okay, I'll try this in, in GPU sim again first. Just so that I get anywhere with my hardware here. <laughs> you can, right? Yes, that's what I thought. Keep polygroups intact, then remesh, and then... And then you retain that. I think Blender is clever enough to do it with its remesher as well. If you wanted to ever use that, it also retains the materials. It's it's kind of magic, kind of magic. I should really do freezing here on some of these pieces, shouldn't I? Let me actually do that. Let me go and undo that, undo that. Can I? Yeah, perfect. Let me basically freeze everything except for the collar. See if I can work out how to do that. What is the collar? That's the collar. Okay. So essentially everything and freeze. Where's freeze? Freeze, partial freeze. Select all freeze, all freeze, I like. That is how you do that, right? Is it, I think? Everything's frozen. And now this piece here, I'm gonna unfreeze that. How do I unfreeze something? Is that just shift K like the other one? So A and so shift K, is that, is that frozen? Doesn't look frozen. Unfreeze. Isn't it supposed to... There's also partial freeze. That is something new. I don't think I've seen that. <laughs> it doesn't, does it? It, goes, it usually goes into some kind of a different... So Shift K is definitely freeze. And it goes into this different color, doesn't it? And it just isn't... It hasn't done that. Why? The mysteries. As I'm already hatching plans, fixing it with, with 3D sculpting. <laughs> Why does it not work, Chris? Why does it only work for other people? Is it, do they check my username and remove features if it's me? Sometimes shortcut keys don't work. Let me see. Since the menu is, is getting more and more like ZBrush is, I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out. So my idea was to basically freeze everything like that. Boom. Aha! So shortcut keys were indeed not working, like you say. Very good. I love it. So now if I select this. That's the part I want to unfreeze. And I go right click and say, unfreeze. That is what I meant. Ha ha. Chris, sometimes it's the easy things, isn't it? So I'm sure that this piece, my CPU should be able to handle. My CPU should be able to now. Thank you. Good stuff. <laughs> feature, right? Yeah, absolutely. Good feature. Unfreeze. So now then, It's almost like I want to make that a bit um, a bit longer so that it stands up a little. Oh, this, maybe we can use uh, Christina's tip once again. This is if I strengthen this. Oh, is it actually two pieces? What's, which one's this one then here? Oh, no, that's that. No, so we, we just need this one here. Like just that. Just and <clears throat> just that. That, that's the one. Yes, good point. That's the one. So there's a way to strengthen this as well. And then it goes like really strong. Maybe now I can go and I 
unstrengthen that. It's almost like I want to, I want to add an internal line and just just uh, bend it over a little. Also, I think I'm kind of ruining it. <laughs> I think I might actually just stick with the previous version and just live with that, because whatever I'm doing here is not really working for me. Okay, <laughs> let project abandoned in Marvelous Designer. Perfect. We'll just we'll just live with this awesome stuff. Goody. <laughs> World's worst clothing designer. <laughs> so the cursor. I've just moved the 3D cursor into somewhere else but I accidentally right clicked 3D cursor to origin. I'd love to put that back to where that was. How do we do that? Put the 3D cursor back into the origin to 3D cursor. It's basically the other way around. Uh, cursor to Cursor to World Origin, that's the one. Whew, good stuff. <laughs> Another annoying feature. Right, let's do UVs then. UVs, UVs. So UV editing. That's our UVs. I think I might just leave all of it in one UV island. I think I'm... I'm not going to unwrap it or anything. I'm just going to pack it, uh, which was... Pack islands like that. There. Perfect. And I might just have a little gander at the at the material properties. Just see if what's what here. And just name them something a little more uh, sensible. like this cotton canvas front that is collar and sleeves I suppose let's go rename that sleeves and collar and this one here hmm let's say coat This one, I guess skirt, skirt and actually skirt and, uh, yeah, it's just a skirt, it's just a skirt. Hardware trim front 2058, what might that be? Ah. Shoulder pad trim, possibly. Anything else? Something on the buttons? No, it's just on the f on the top there, wasn't it? I'll just say shoulder trim and then we have one last one Oop. deselect and then this one here is all oh, the buttons good stuff buttons so that'll be the metal okay goody I'm gonna go and save this as a project here. We 
Okay, uh, should I have a quick test if I can if I can do something with the collar that I just make that just stand out while I'm in Blender? I mean, this is also something I can probably do later in uh, in ZBrush, maybe just easier as a as a quick fix. Yeah, let me just go do the do the basics here, so that I can maybe use ZBrush for that. I don't have to battle through the Blender sculpting tools and get confused. I think I might just use that. So outfit V2, I'm gonna go and call that um, Military Lolita. And let's export this puppy. Well, that's certainly another OBJ. Military Lolita is good. Selection. And I think since we're in the correct scale, I need to export that at 100% or at, at 100 times larger. Vertex Auto currently isn't an issue, I don't think. I might just enable that anyway, just because I can. Selection is good. Triangulate we don't really need. Modifiers we don't have. Include UVs, yes. Include materials, yes. Okay. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. See what Dash Studio makes of that and how we can how we can go and give that some materials. Have we saved this scene yet? No, not yet. <laughs> Let's do that. So full scene then. Also, more coffee, very important. Yeah, so if this works in principle, I might have a crack at it tomorrow with materials. And to finish off the, the final render there. Let's see, so this, whatever I've used before. Does it work? Yes, 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 it works. Goody. Not bad. And it'll be loose around the character, so I'm not gonna rig it or anything. I just wanna make a render with it. So that's that's the only thing I wanna do. After fixing the JCMs for hours, then you realize that you did not save them when you reopened the clothing piece. <laughs> It is just so much work. I think, DZ, we were talking about this um, at the weekend with with Fugazi, that like, you know, things like Marvelous Designer, great tool to play with um, and do things with. And like what I'm doing, I'm making a render out of it. I'm just making a render. And I think we were agreeing on the point that there's just a world of a difference between making a picture look good or having a personal 3D project that you're working on and turning it into a usable product. Man, that's just like an ocean of work between that, isn't it? Like morphs, morph controlled morphs, joint controlled morphs, the material presets, the naming conventions and stuff. I don't really need to have my surfaces named all that nicely here. As long as I know what's what, I'm, I'm okay with it. But for a customer, this needs to look the part. So, which is why I'm so impressed by your prolific output. I mean, you must work flat out for hours, for hours, DZ. Goes right to the top of my shout out list so that I can give you shout outs starting tomorrow. So, um, this isn't bad. I do, I do like it. I do like it. Let's see if we can. I don't think I have materials that I can use for that. Maybe I can just employ Substance Painter to make some quite quickly. Does that is that in the realm of possibility? Or would that be would that be too much 
for the day maybe we can we can do it just drag and drop a few and see if we can see if we can make it happen so it looks like we don't need a marvelous designer anymore then i don't know when i've saved the project last but maybe i'll go and save an, another iteration here incorrect save as custom v2 i'll call it just so that that there's something there free up some of my programs here and while you're doing that i might try don't think i need blender anymore while you do that let me go and export this to a technically i suppose we only have one version of the garment, so I think if I wanted to make it, uh, if I wanted to make it marvelous, um, substance friendly, I could always go and triangulate this, and then import the triangulated and the high-res version. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, the amount of stuff that you make, that's another question I have for you, DZ. Where does your inspiration come from? That is something that uh, that's that's tricky to do. I mean, you know, there's only, there's, there's a t-shirt, but you can make 20 different ones if you have the right inspiration of saying, hey, I want to vary this, I want to vary that. Loving the boots, by the way, great boots. You should consider selling them as a, as a female product as well. They might they might look good in, in, for females as well. Not that they don't work with um, with auto fit, that'll that'll also work. But yeah, it's not a product. Get the bundle out as well, male and female boots. Triangulating, particularly bad idea. <laughs> it appears. We'll let that studio get on with it. I'll go start with substance painter. See if I can see if I can put some of these things on here. See if we find nice materials. See if I can do it in 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm already thinking maybe we'll forget the triangulation idea. What I should have done though in uh, and I was trying to do that with Das Studio, but if it's you know if it's difficult, I'm just going to do it with with Blender. I'm going to go and export a second version of my thing out without materials. If Das Studio thinks about this for a little while, I'll just go and export this out again, just so that I don't have to deal with. So military Lolita Nomads, I'll call it. And it's that, and then here I'll say not right materials. Oh, and also the scale, I'm gonna have that just so that it matches the other thing. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Oh, okay. I was thinking maybe you can just use the the female that comes with the uh, with the starter essentials. But I see what you mean with the with the morphs. Yes, no, I I totally agree. I totally agree. Oh, it's done. It's done here. That's cool. So I can maybe just go and export that out. Military Lolita Nomads tries, And then I'll just use that. And be hundred and surface, no surfaces here. Yes, 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 yes. Good stuff. And now that I've triangulated it, I need to actually either detriangulate it or bring it in again. I might just go and do that. So it's actually also that's I suppose that's the other thing that I like about you, DZ, that um, the, the Genesis men, they don't get a lot of love. So it's very nice that there's like a dedicated clothing creator and it's, you know, it's your thing. So I like, I like the idea that you, you have a focus and you know, this is good. I like that. I really like that. 
So I'll just bring back what I had here before, just so that we have the materials and the non-triangulated stuff. Good stuff. Thanks, Blender. Appreciate it. So, let's do materials. This one was military, Lolita, nomads and tries. Document, well, leave that, leave that on 1K. I think this wants to be OpenGL. And we haven't really got anything to get started with, so... Let's see. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Willy. Um, in, so in, when you make garments for the DAS store, there's, whoops, uh, how do we do? Oh yeah, there we go. Different modifier keys, of course, in every application, so that it's much easier to remember what we're doing. Um, for the for the DAS store, they have quite a list of requirements of base morphs that need to be in a product when you're selling it. So I sub I don't know, do, do Renderosity have that as well? Or can you basically sell essentially whatever you feel is right? Bake mesh maps, I'll go and say, I'll, I'll use 4K. Let's treat ourselves. I'll use everything here. And I'll use the untriangulated mesh. From here. As that. There were ways to... Do we just drop that down here, Chris? I don't... I never remember. Max frontal distance. Just so that the normals are looking awesome. I think we just drop that right down, don't we? I think. Or oh, might not worry. I might just go and hit big selected textures. We'll see what happens. <laughs> see what see what happens. Right. Yes. Indeed. I can. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. Once you've made the the one T-shirt cut with the one frilly bit, I suppose that is really. <laughs> What else are you going to do? So hence, yeah, but you keep coming up with new ideas. That's very, that's very nice and innovative. For better projection of the IDs. Gotcha. Oh, IDs I don't have here. What was I thinking? I don't have the IDs. Man, I gotta got go, gotta go back. Gotta go back. I forgot the IDs, Chris. Now that you've you've totally mentioned that, totally forgot the ID. So, the, we have the script here. I think was it in utilities? I totally forgot that. Thank you so much for for reminding me. PA support package here. There's one random color all items, and that's what it does. So it just goes and and puts a different color on every on every material. And if you don't like them, you can just do it again. But it, I don't think um, Substance cares about it. It just goes and does this. And so that's, you know, that's that's that. I totally forgot about this. Um, technically, I should also go and triangulate that again, but that took quite a bit of time. So I might just live without the, tri the, without the triangulation. So this one's here, uh, I'll just call that one no mats, and then at least I'll just overwrite that. No, the no mats version I already have, duh. This one's gonna be the one um, with mats. I'll just call it ID mats. It's not tries, but hey. We'll be okay. There. That. Dang. <laughs> I don't think so either. It's recommended, but it's also not essential. It's just like more like a predictable way of doing it. 
Let me just kind of just go bake this again. If I go and say this here, no. Can I actually give it more than one mesh? Is that possible? That would be kind of crazy, wouldn't it? ID mats, I'll say. So on the ID mat, it's material color rather than vertex color, which you could also use, but we don't have that. We have material color. And I should have just used, I should have just baked the ID map now. Da, not everything again. But it's cool, we have the time. <laughs> nice script, right? Yeah, it's, it's really cool. And it's actually, I think it's clear as well, is it? I think it is. Yeah, it's, it's really, it comes as a part of the PA support package. So if you are a vendor at DAS, I think you, you get that. But it's also, I don't, I don't think it's, it's all that difficult to write from scratch. So let's see. So ID map. Yes, there we go. So now we have our IDs and I don't have to worry about it. I also don't get an error message. That's quite nice. Often I do get these little little things at the bottom here that say um, some triangle was too small to do whatever. So, um, he's had this... Maybe the buttons are the simplest thing to do. Maybe I'll start there. So this is kind of dark gray, then the buttons are metal, and this is kind of a white fabric, and this is kind of a dark gray fabric. What do what fabrics do I have? Do I have fabrics? Cotton technical fabric. I think that is exactly the one he's used in Marvelous Designer. Cotton technical. I'm just going to go left click and drag that on. Kind of on here. Will that work? This we don't need. And then we have the floral lace fabric. We could try that on the arms type thing. There was something else that I needed to do for that, didn't I? That, ooh, yuck. Was there the, you gotta do the color selection mask, wasn't there? And you gotta pick the color. And this was kind of that. Indeed. And then also, I think we want the same material on top of here. So that would be another layer, I suppose, or another color selection mask. Another layer, I suppose, wouldn't it? I suppose. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Let's tweak the scaling just, just a little bit there. Because then if I go and say, this is like, say the, the skirt, would I just do that and say, this is kind of the top? A new color selection here. Pick color like this. Or I could be super fancy and make it make them kind of linked layers or something. I think we may have to go and crank that up so that we can that we can see what this actually looks like here. This already looks pretty terrible. I don't know what why why that looks so bad may have been the distance thing that I should have tweaked so that the maps would look a little better. Certainly, certainly learning that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, let's see if I go and put the, the, uh, 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 where's the thing that I'm looking for? The thing with the thing. Oh, that's here, of course, there. Oop. Four, maybe five, is that, is that cool? Five is maybe funky. So five on down here as well, on the skirt.
Oh, can you? Can you? Can it? Let's just test that theory, shall we? So I just add another color to it. Ah, uh, Chris, no way. No way. That is seriously cool. I didn't know. Bing. Skirt and top. I like it. Thanks for the tip. I didn't know. Interesting. So then this here. Mask with color selection. And this is then like this. And then we just go and make that ever so slightly smaller. Or just use a totally different material as well. That's that is also possible. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, lace at all. I'll see if I can find something better. Just in principle, it's kind of. I think it's it's good to you know good to good to have something there. Then we have gold buttons, pure gold, perfect. We'll go put that here, and then that also doesn't look bad. I've got to say, <laughs> color selection. Namely that. And then we have that other thing, the top stitch. But I wonder if that is something... Yeah, that clearly went, went a little wrong here. Does that come better when I go 4K? I think this is kind of more like a map thing that wasn't baked properly because the distance was too large. Oh no, there we go. So it does, does come out that way. Oh, this is the top stitch thing here. So those are stitches then. Do they have a color? They do. Dang, brother. So they do have a color, my goodness. That's fairly cool, but they just, you know, there's these splatty bits around. And that is just the ID map, is it? Let me see if I can bake some of these maps again. And I'll just stick on the ID map because I think that'd be, that'd be nice to get rid of these splodges here. If I go bake mesh maps... Which which of these distances do you have to set all the way down? Is it these two here? Frontal distance and rear distance? Because I could just go and just use the ID maps again and just make that as small as. Anti-aliasing. It's also something I could consider. But the old anti-aliasing. Might be something, right? Those two. Are you are you setting this as well, anti-alias, or do you set this, do you leave this on none? I can always try both. Like I'll just I'll just attach these two values here. Say bake selected textures and see if that improves it here. That'd be kind of sweet. It's better as well as worse. That is interesting. One's certainly better. The other one no longer is. But why? I like it. I like it. Like Max, like like this. Just ID. Nope, still working on it. Nope, it's done now. Let's try them.
like this, zero and one. See what happens. Before we start fiddling with the anti-aliasing. Match by mesh name. Uh, no. Ignore BF. Fascinating, isn't it? That is certainly worse now. Let's try it with one and zero. Hmm. Fascinating. <laughs> Makes me wonder if we can bring in if we can literally bring in different meshes for different things. Like, um, if I could bring in a mesh that would just be there to bake this part, but use this mesh, mesh to bake all the other parts, that'd be kind of cool. Try, okay, so rather than, okay, let, let me try that. So rather than zero, I'll just try something like Like that. <laughs> That's the last digit I can put in there. Let's try that. <laughs> I love experimenting like that. See what happens next. Chris, how fascinating. And now it's freaking clean, huh? What? I'm going to buy you a coffee later. That is... what? <laughs> what could be the possible explanation for this? Either way, you are the magic man. This is how to do it. How fascinating. This hopefully has also benefited my other materials, which are now potentially cleaner. Chris, you're the magic man. This is exciting. So we've got the pure gold on the buttons and now we have the top stitch thing, which is another layer. It's Chris, that's crazy. Um, maybe something like... Maybe rough fabric. That could, that could work. Put that on here, rough fabric, and then we're just going to change the color of that. How fascinating! <laughs> May you have had the same problem before. Yes, possible. These are just pitfalls. You just wouldn't, you just, you'd have to fall in and be baffled by that. My God, this was already a great session, knowing about this and how important that is. Very exciting. Gotta say. <laughs> Gotta say. Pick color. Can we just about pick something here? Like that is, of course, the wrong color, dude. Like this, this color. Yes, I like. Goody, and then this, I don't really want for that to be blue. I'm happy for that to be kind of a, kind of that. And that's just a little rough for the stitches. That's that might or might not look great. I'm not entirely sure about the about the lace part now. Let's see if there's a different a different fabric for that. A fabric knitted sweater. I could try. I'm already in love, reasonably. Oops. Maybe that'll work. 
maybe that'll work. Oh, we've got we've forgotten one, which is uh, this trim here at the top. Ah, interesting. So we have a similar issue here. On that kind of trim. Can I just go and select the same thing as I'll just say these are the stitches here. Let's say these are the buttons and these are the sleeves. And then here where the stitches are, I might just use a different, just a similar, like an alternate. Oh no, hang on. It's already got a color selector. Okay, fine, fine. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It's cool. What? No. <laughs> what just happened? There. Yeah, so that trim material thing, that didn't quite come out. That's a bit of a shame. So maybe we'll just go and put other embellishments on there. That's possible. Or I could just go and draw some stitches in here, or I can go and repaint the map. That's, I suppose, also an idea. The map or the, the um, yeah, the map or the, or the mask even. Well, fine tuning. Let me see if I can bring this out into Das Studio and get a quick handsome render out of this and see what that looks like. Also, save your project, Jay, save your project. See what happens. textures no missive uh, height map might do normal yes metallic yes everything else yes I like it those maps. I'll put directory anything in here that we don't currently don't need anymore. Good stuff. And doing this in 4K. All right. See what happens. <laughs> yeah, maybe a button on the shoulder. Yes, I, I like the idea. I might do that. I might just do that in, in Das Studios just to hide that part just a flat little thing, or maybe I just go and um, or import something from somewhere. See how this works. So copy that into, ah, uh, that's not exactly what I meant. Um, this and here we have textures. This uh, is probably Make that white again. And I'm going to set up just one material here. And then I'll copy that to all the other zones. That's the plan. So we have the base of that. Oh, I could actually, can I use the... No, it's going to be, it's going to be tricky. 
I kind of like digging into these to figure out where where all these things are. So that is here. Is it? Yes. Then we have height. That's kind of in the... Don't know if we're going to use height. Normal is here. Then we have metallic that's in there. We'll switch that to one. Haha! Metal buttons. And then there's roughness, which is under glossy. As in roughness. There. Map, and then that goes number one. I think that is all that we want for now. I think. And, and, yes. Certainly looks similar to what it did in Substance Painter. Quick look in iRay. Kid bashing is the way to go, right? Yes, I totally agree. Yeah, I think in hindsight, I would probably go and uh, take this whole top stitch thing away and uh, and do that with a with a map instead. So I'd probably go and do this with with real stitches, uh, like just you know redraw the stitches. I mean, kind of looks okay, but from afar, I'm I'm getting the impression that they could be a bit um, wider. <laughs> While wow, this took me two hours to get to this point and I, I don't have a rigged version yet so <laughs> not bad not bad not bad marvelous designer substance painter blender all involved we could go ahead and i think i might do that before i uh, before i turn my uh my attention to lights and a quick render here I'm gonna try to do something like aside from that I'll just put a button here like like you suggested I'm gonna try to just flip that flip that collar over here see if I can can I do that comfortably just pull that out a little bit let's see let's see Final finishing touches. Before we spend two hours on the expression and the lights. Because <laughs> that's what we do. Oh, you didn't bring over the, the thing. That's a shame, isn't it? I guess it didn't like that. Unless it's still working on it. No. Here it is. I've never quite got the hang of how to rotate things in in ZBrush. This is almost like something I should probably 
maybe it's something I need to do with with vertex tools uh, or with with actually with masking. That's probably something that'll that'll work. Yeah, this like grabbing the top edge and rotating that around. I have no idea how to do that in, in ZBrush. You'd think the rotate tool would come in handy, but of course the moment you, you try to do anything, it just switches back to something else. So maybe it's, it's, not, it's not for me. Oops. Yeah, maybe vertex tools would be would indeed be better for that. Yeah, just the just the top thing and just flip that round. That's actually maybe that is something that that I could just use uh, literally hexagon for. <laughs> maybe let's try. Or Blender. That Blender will also do it. Well, it's Hexagon is really struggling with a high uh, polygon count here. <laughs> Poor Hexagon. I'll just use... Or even better, actually, I'll use this and use... Come on, buddy. You can do it. We know you can. I think I can select this. And then say Shift select that. And then there's a way to select everything in between these. I'm going to have to do that section by section. That's a puzzle. I don't know how to solve it. Does bounding box work better? Uh, that's the same effect, doesn't it? So, yeah, selection smaller, smaller sections then, still smaller. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Or learn to do it properly. <laughs> also an approach. Cut it off, turn it, sword back on. That's another approach. Yeah, I don't know how to solve it. I'm, I'm not a good enough modeler to, to grab that top part and just bend it down so that it looks like on this side here. Let me try it in Blender one more time. So if, if the ZBrush isn't isn't my tool for this, and Hexagon isn't either, maybe I can do it in Blender. Maybe, 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 maybe. Let's try.
could probably use the original blend file that I had for this. What I love is that every app has different modifier keys. That is just so hilarious, isn't it? Like select that and then I Dude, come on. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I can do it. I, I have I don't know how to do this. I'll go research this. If I get it done, it'll only just be a morph that that I'll add. So I'll go. That's that's okay. Fine. I, I've tried three different ways. I can't make any of them work. So that's that's okay. I'll go and just make turn this into a little render. That's just how it goes sometimes. Maybe we'll try this one. See what see what see what happens. Uh, there might also be a bit of um, skin shader waiting for us. Maybe uh, maybe Mylin. That's cool. Gia Gia maybe. Gia all maps perfect. I like it. Expression, I'm not going to worry about. Uh, it's camera maybe kind of from, from here, something like that. And then... And then, like, slightly longer. And then uh, depth of field too. That's already fairly well set up. What does that look like? Before we do it with hair. And perhaps an expression. I don't think we need any accessories here because they don't they don't really fit on there, except for maybe some earrings that might work. And I might not actually use the dome. Could uh, try this with a backdrop just so that I get the kind of a darker black here. Like, um, wasn't that the word backdrop here somewhere? Maybe it's not in alphabetical order, could that be? That'd be bad. Oh, it's already open somewhere. 
I don't see it. No, don't have backdrop anymore. It's been it's been removed. I use that soul environment. That's that's what it's called. And then yes, that's that's what it's that's what it was called. Just to emulate that on a on a darkish background. See if I caught all the catch lights here. So it's a bit uh, a bit hot maybe. Point seven tone mapping as well. Burn the highlights a little bit less, like so. And maybe we since it's going to be a darker kind of background, I'll try with um, with one light from here. Two would be better, but we'll try one. Makes that softer, but this this separation is really um, important. And one one is fine. I think maybe it's a bit a bit strong, so we'll go and make it half as goody. Okay, hair. <laughs> Add a bit of our expression first. Maybe we'll see what the expression. Thing is going to be like she's also not high rest. That's we'll do that first. Expression. Do we have anything fast that'll, that'll work? Pirate expressions. Yeah, that's, that's something interesting. I'm probably not doing myself a favor by having iRay on here. <laughs> Let's see if that works a little bit uh, faster now. Obviously she doesn't like being in the military, so I'm thinking something of a slightly unhappy expression would be would be nice. There, maybe just lost the lover or something. Perfect. <laughs> Got the expression going. Let's go and have a bit of light. Also, um, 
just save my scene. And I was going to try the, the Lindy's blowout hair. I've never tried that before. That might look really nice. If that is, is that not only, there we go. For eight and 8.1, perfect. Blood with D-Force, base style with D-Force. Classic blowout with D-Force, behind ear style. Oh, I see. Yeah, behind ear style, let's do that. Perfect. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yes, exactly, Julia. Her being upset about the collar, yes. <laughs> Good idea. That is a great idea. So it looks wild right now because if we're going to deforce that, it'll be, um, it looks slightly less wild. Very good point, Julia. Love your, love your thinking there. <laughs> this is a bit hot because the scene lights are doing that, so, and then... Okay, I'll go and save this again and just see what what Deforce brings to the party. This could this could look this could hopefully it's going to go well because yeah, you you never know, <laughs> you never know. Okay, let's let's try. <laughs> Problem solved. Collar didn't need to be fixed after all. <laughs> okay, so the dress isn't deforce, of course. The dress is moving with her. And it's just about the hair. And she's hopefully going to just grow into the, into the dress. And the hair, I don't actually know how it works with items that are not deforce. I think they work as colliders by default in deforce. But we'll find out. <laughs> Great idea. Don't solve the collar. Leave the collar as it is, covered up with hair. And if the hair doesn't work, perhaps a cat on the shoulder or something. That'll, that'll certainly work. While this is doing that, maybe I'll go and save my, my substance project here. And then I'll go and close that down for another color variation here. Failed to save updated preset PBR roughness. Okay. Cool. With the parrot! Perfect! <laughs> it works. We're thinking along the same lines. I've not investigated the hair, but it's. Uh, I'd love to maybe try one day to, uh, to not just have it deforce, just fall down, but add a wind note to it from the front so that it maybe just, you know, flows a bit to the back we'll see how that goes to see how long it how long it takes to simulate it's often the trying it out until you get the good result where you think yeah, i'm already bored really if it takes 10 minutes for the hair to simulate it um you have to try that 10 times to get the correct intensity of the wind note it's, <laughs> life's too short sometimes isn't it <laughs> chris what's for dinner tonight at shea chris <laughs> Willie, I'm assuming you're based in the US as well, kind of east coast around here, like Charles. I'm assuming, I don't really know. We're all east coast US here, Chris, Julia, I, and I don't actually know where DZ lives. He, I, I don't, I'm not sure. We're just this global community, you know. Supermarket sushi, oh, okay. We have a deal, 
in our supermarket that on Wednesdays you get a box of sushi for five bucks. That's kind of nice. Could do that soon. <laughs> Could do that. We only had some soup for lunch. Uh, so don't know what we're going to have for dinner. <laughs> You're in Belgium. Okay, cool. Like Bluxfy. Your neighbors with Bluxfy. I like it. <laughs> so for you, it's like late, late now. You're in Singapore. Okay, Singapore. At the time, that's that's also fairly fairly early in the morning now, isn't it, DZ? Two ten. Willie's about to fall asleep. <laughs> and then there's the chilled beats in the background. Opposite side of the planet. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, that hair's working great. I wish I could move the viewport now, but I don't think I can while DeForce is doing its thing. This is working great. We need to work on the hair color a little. And then we'll see how that one backlight works. I have a feeling that's going to do wonders to illuminating the hair and shining through. Going to probably have to play with that intensity a little bit. Eight eleven. In the morning. Wow. So you've been awake all this time. That is very impressive. Jeremy is from Singapore and not originally, but he lives in Singapore and he is, uh, he has, he's essentially on, on Eastern standard time almost. So it's kind of cool. He, he sleeps during the day and is awake working most of the night. It's kind of cool in these creative professions that we have the luxury to do that. It's very nice. Stabilizing, yes. <laughs> Isn't there a product on the store called Deforce Catalyzer or something? Where apparently Deforce calculation times are kind of cut in half or whatnot? Because I'm always thinking, I mean, I understand it's a complex process and stuff, right? But if I look at my, at my task manager here, and Dash Studio is doing things very high and it's using the GPU and stuff. It's not exactly flat out. So I'm, I'm always wondering, can't you make that multi-core or can't you, can't you hammer my GPU a little more or, you know, can't you use two GPUs or something? But I guess not. I, I, maybe I don't quite understand how the calculations work there. <laughs> That's clever. That's clever. Then we, you do away with the wind node, yeah. Or also what I like doing is, especially with hair that doesn't have defaults, just put it into ZBrush and just put it out um, into wherever you need it to be. So that's also, it's off. sometimes that's a, that's a quicker way to deal with that. Had I used the timeline for it, I could have also picked a different spot where the hair kind of just before it settles down and stabilizes. I can just go slightly further before that. Or be less accurate with hair. That's also a possibility. There we go. I mean, that looks pretty neat. I gotta, gotta say. <laughs> Very cool. I may actually just take it into into ZBrush and just make it make it blow out um, at the back because I think we we see her from from kind of here, so it'd be be neat. Whoops, sorry, sorry, sweetie, come back. <laughs> okay, totally messed messed with your hair there, messed with your head there. Yeah, just just pull that out a little to that side, even without the without the wind note. Let me try that. Oops. ZBrush is uh, no longer with us. No, that's that's okay. Um, make that base resolution just to make ZBrush a little a little faster. There. <laughs> There's so many cool things you can do with uh, with D4. So. I'm actually glad we have it. I mean, this is something. It's it's difficult to to get right, and it's kind of integrated into. Uh, into ZBrush, into, into Dash Studio, and it's completely free. So what's not to like? I'm not entirely sure where the hair ended up now. Is that another subtool? No, hair is not here with us, where 
it should be really. So I'll go and it's come in. It just hasn't hasn't parented itself into here. There's actually several of them. Why we we don't know. Oh yeah, that's a should have done it the other way around. Select her and then go use a pen here and then use the hair there. Okay, and then we have Transp. And this is base rest now. this oh, those are the the strands that's not the right uh, brush it's maybe elastic Just give it that extra bit of um, extra bit of volume, and if I do it in in strokes that are too large, I'll just go back and oops, and use the other brush here, the one with the the topological. I think that's like literally individual hair strands to pull out. And then to ditch that in again a little bit. I've seen hair products on ArtStation as well. That is kind of cool. So you get your, you can buy hair cards and then uh, turn them into either conforming hair or, oops, or deforce hair. You can even draw these things out that's also possible. Because with elastic, with this kind of a smaller thing, I'll go and bend this in a bit again. So we're probably not going to see that from, from back here, but maybe that's kind of cool. Go Z back into Death Studio. Ah, that's interesting. Why? Why? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Classic blood here. Yes. Did it? Uh, I'll just call this one Windy. Windy, and I've overdone it. If I've overdone it, I just go and turn that into something slightly less here again. Sometimes that's not always. It's not always all that predictable. So this was the beginning. This is what I did. And if that's too much, I'll just go and blend this in a little to maybe here. And then there's a boom, and then we go. We're good, we're good. Okay, let's see what that looks like with a render. And I might have two uh, two cameras here. She doesn't have any... She doesn't have any... Uh, any shoes on, even though DZ's boots would look cool on this. So I'll have this and then I'll make another camera for a close-up. It's camera white this is, or just like, you know, camera duplicate that and this one is the camera close then oops <laughs> and save yes good point good point julia thank you 
that's uh, a little much. We don't need this anymore, so we go close this down. And then camera close is more something like, you know, like, like that. Uh, closer and that's probably also not got the right uh, depth of field now does it no so focal distance just put that here and this is probably more like a little little wider there okay big reveal What's the oh yeah, the, also the, the color of the hair. I was thinking we can have a nosy at that. Materials, oh, there's shaping ones. Oh, there is shaping as well. How do the initial shape, oh, that's cool. I'll oh, look at that in a sec. So uh, blue, green, pink. I was kind of thinking something along the lines of a blonde, like something like this, blonde 21. Just slightly lighter. Not something that is that blonde. That's maybe a bit, bit too much. Yeah, just something like this. A golden blonde. <laughs> I'll see what that looks like in, um, in iRay. And then we're done. Under three hours. Look at that. <laughs> And this would have also taken me that long had I done this by myself. This is so light because of the light from the back. So that might be uh, too light. The light, I mean. Or we just give it a different a different color. What, what happens if we give it a... Like a darker blonde. That might work uh, better. It looks a little more natural, maybe. Lindy gives us like a hundred options for for hair colors. That's crazy good. My God. <laughs> and then there's also hair color settings. Display materials. Oh, okay. Nice. Big product. This. Yeah, maybe that's nice. So it's kind of almost black and white, but not quite. I'm even thinking that maybe we can do something in the, with the with the background in. Um, I was going to do something in Photoshop there, but. Uh, I like this from the side actually much better because it shows off the outfit a bit more. And then it's less about the character, so it's more about the outfit then. Cool, if that's our white shot, then this here, this can be our close up, maybe also from the side. Yeah, I like it better. I like it better. All right, let me go render this out. Something in, in Photoshop, I was thinking, I mean, there's, there's something that always uh, works. I'll see if I, I add that in here. It's like these, um, uh, what's it called? These, um, uh, 
Brain, hello. Come back to me. Particles. Let me try that as well. There's also so two things I'm just seeing here. The hair could, I don't know if that's made for that, could benefit from high resolution. It already is that. Okay, so th that's going to come out a little better in the final render. That is nice. I like it. Depth of field isn't as shallow here as I like it to be. I think it works in the regular camera, but here it, I think I've toned it down. Yeah, that might be a bit, a bit shallow. So maybe this, and then put it here so that we throw most of the hair out of focus. I like that. Uh, particles. I think we're the environmental thing. It's a product by Matty Manx that, that kind of does it. This one here, MMX Fire and Smoke for iRay. And just like a, like a particle scatter is kind of nice. So it just goes and adds a little bit of atmosphere, especially if you add these things with, um, with depth of field there. It just adds, you know, what isn't there. So like a plain, um, Color background is now going to look just amazing just because we have these particles here. That's very, very cool. And then in the white shot, they look rad as well. So, haha, I like it. I like it. Quickly save <laughs> and I'll go and render these things uh, out, uh, put a little bit of Photoshopage behind it, and then I'll post those on my ArtStation page. And I might also turn this into a little thumbnail for, actually, let me do that. Let's do that now. Let's do that now. This is uh, camera wide, and I'll go and set up uh, one more. Actually, that's a duplicate of this. Edit, duplicate that, and this is going to be the camera uh, 16 by 9 and for that we'll use local dimension so we'll basically keep this we just change the framing so that we have like that and then I can use this as a as a thumbnail and just use zoom image on this uh, hello they like that focal length just make that make that make that that make that that thumbnail done perfect or thereabouts, you know, I think, yeah, maybe, maybe something like that. <laughs> and we save, yes. Here, yeah, they're perfect with the particle in exactly the right position. Save it. And there was much rejoicing. There's also much rejoicing because, hey, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate that. This was an unplanned session. And I think, you know, other than this one streak of hair here, this here, I might, I might pull that down with ZBrush, just like, you know, just notch that down here. I think I'm really, really happy with how this came out. It was a ton of work though, bringing it from Marvelous Designer. That took like an hour to make that garment fit uh, onto a custom character. Then like a good, another good hour for the materials in Substance Painter, but I think it was all worthwhile. Thank you so much for being here. DZ, Mr. Chris, Madness Middles, Julia. There was also Willie and many other people who've been watching. I'm totally okay with you not chatting. I just, you know, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. I might be back later this week. Not sure if it's tomorrow or on Wednesday, but I will be back. Thank you so much for watching. I have other exciting things I want to play with and test out. Have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll see you very soon. Take care.